Hey gang, it's me, Shannon, Sheepless Needles, vegan podcast. Not about being vegan, where we do all sorts of fun things like talk about knitting, talk about beer, talk about bunnies that are right at my feet that you can't see, kitties, I don't know, TV. Listen, oh. Hello, someone's got some something going on back there. So, <laughs> oh, now he comes down that we're looking at him. Really, dude? You're so cute. Okay, so anyway, welcome. Hey, listen, if you're coming back, I took a month off of my podcast because I was working on the 2022 Stephen West Twist and Turns M. Cow as exhibited in my wardrobe. Um, excuse me, I have something very weird happening. Hopefully we're still recording. Okay, so anyway, I took a month off. So hi, welcome back to me and you. And if you're new here, maybe you came over from the MCAL and I'm so glad you're over here. Hang out, pull up a chair, grab a project, grab a beverage, you know, you do you. Maybe you're doing coffee or tea. Maybe you're doing beer. Maybe you're doing whiskey. Maybe you're not. I don't know. Listen, not mine to judge, just mine to enjoy. So with that in mind, I will tell you, we're going to need a beer today. We being me. Where did I put the bottle? Ah, where's the bottle opener? Oh, oh cheesy peeps. Oh. Okay. You guys. Well, let's first of all, Lydia, I'm wearing Lydia. Lydia, if you want to know more about Lydia, please hit up the playlist. It'll be in the show notes, or maybe we'll link it somewhere in the podcast. Um, I have a video series on the process and progress of said Lydia. That's Smithers. That's one of the cats. Um, so if you're interested in like learning about the MCAL and all that good stuff, please check that out. I'm not going to go over that today because you know, I, I've already done that. And yeah. So anyway, Bierski to me. And this is my dogfish. You know, this is my last pumpkin ale. Oh, we need it. We need it for today's topic, people. We need it. Oh, I needed that. that is... Shane. Okay, you guys. We're just going to jump in. You're not the dumbest knitter. And you want to know how I know you're not the dumbest knitter? This girl right here might be the dumbest knitter. And okay, so where to be where to begin? <laughs> I am nothing. I'm not talking about Trent Reznor. Let me start that over. I am nothing if I am not consistent in my aversion to rule following. Now, some would say, Smithers, what are you doing? <laughs> There's a cat right off camera. Um, Please don't, please don't. Those are my glasses. No. Okay. Come on. Um, some would say, hi. Okay. Come on. Let me get my beer out of the way. What are you doing, dude? This is called the podcast takeover. Oh, now we're going to eat the microphone. That's good. You know, let's, let's just move the microphone. Let's just do that. Yep. Keep going. I'll just yell. Oh. We'll just wait. You know, he'll he'll go about his business in a minute. Mm-hmm. Sir. Sir. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Can you... Oh, 
Oh, okay. Hi. Can I have my microphone back? Can you get your butt out of the microphone? Bad things are afoot. Can you guys, I hope you guys, oh, I'm now, I'm way over. Okay. Hopefully that's better. I don't know about the level. Okay. All right, if I talk, oh, no, I'm going. Okay. Anyway, let me get back to my train and thought, which was that I am nothing if not consistent about my lack of following rules. Okay. I'm not a rule follower. Like I like to be given rules because then I know what I need to look outside of. Um, and to some people that is completely rebellious. It is completely obnoxious to other people. I think it's thinking outside the box. It's, but for me, I don't define it in any other way that that's just how I've always been. Um, you know, I always look at rules being set up by someone other than me to control someone like me. And I have a problem with that type of authority. And that has been exhibited throughout my life to the negative, probably a lot in terms of my, my working. <laughs> However, I think that I have a moral compass that is married with that, that keeps me on a, it keeps me on a chaotic neutral path. I'm not chaotic evil. I'm not cha chaotic lawful. I'm right down the middle. Um, now, all of this to say, you're not the dumbest knitter I am. Because, listen, the last month, I really haven't knit anything except Lydia. So here's Lydia. And I'm actually, I don't want to spill anything on Lydia. So I'm going to do a wardrobe change here. But I'll show her to you really quickly. And Mr. Editor, if you can put a photo of Lydia up since this doesn't, it's not very easy to show. But one wingtip. I'm going to try to, oh. Okay. Oh, my God. All right. Come on. How did I already get to the back panel? I think I'm... Anyway, photo, 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 photo. And then the other wingtip. Listen, you guys, I love her. I love Lydia. I will wear her lots, but hold on. Pull the phone. I just need to put something really warm on. And that not that that's not warm, but this I don't care if I spill something on. That I do. Well, this is makes for a good podcast, doesn't it, people? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Look at that hair. Girlfriend. Hang on. Where are my shoulder seams? Good Lord. Oh, much better. Okay. I did not knit this, by the way. I bought this. And it, oh, <laughs> oh, I'm a mess. Okay. Look at that. I don't know what's happening with the hair. Okay, you guys. All right. So anyway, I'm the dumbest knitter. Let's, let's kind of, oh, now I feel much more comfortable. Okay. I'm always worried that I'm going to ruin, I don't want to ruin something. But, oh my God, what's happening here? Um, all right. So I hadn't knit anything else except for Lydia. And, you know, I really didn't do much beyond Lydia. Like I wasn't reading my normal hour a night and you know, I wasn't, I just really was knitting Lydia. So once I finished Lydia, I was like, I got to get my shit together because there is one person I'm knitting for, for the holidays. They don't know I'm knitting for them. They don't watch this podcast. So it's not a big deal. I decided to knit. I wanted a one skein project. So I was like, look, I don't want to stress myself out after. Oh my God. I have so much fuzz in my nose rings right now. Oh my gosh. Ah! Okay. After Lydia, I didn't want something that was so big. I just wanted something one and done. And I, you know, I found this shawl. It is called, oh, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's kind of blown out. It's called the Artesian or Artesian. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I'm going to say Artesian. Specs. Okay. 
<laughs> Excuse me. It's by Rosemary Romy Hill. It is a paid for pattern. I believe it is $7. You can get it on Ravelry. I, I'm going to tell you my journey with this. I'm going to show you where I'm at and tell you what I'm using. Um, I will have Steve, Steve, put a photo of the finished shawl up so that they know where the project is going versus where I'm at with it. Cause those are two totally different things. Hence the topic. Okay. What? Oh my, you guys, what is happening to the hair today? Okay. So I'm all tangled because Smithers was just walking through this. I have done, really, really? I have done two pattern repeats, okay? So there you go, kind of, there you go. Well, me bunching it up isn't helping. Oh, see, this is not, Vanna White, I'm not. So anyway, here's the deal. When I... When I am getting a pattern or working on something from a designer um, that I don't, I haven't worked with their patterns before, I 100% go to project pages and check notes and check clarity ratings and all of that. And I know that can differ by what kind of where you are in your knitting life. I think more advanced knitters will say, oh yeah, it's completely understandable. For a beginner knitter, it might not be. But I like going through the notes because I think that if you find an overwhelming... Hold on. Hello. Are you there? What are you... Well, you're on my podcast because I'm filming. Sheepless needles. That's my sister, you guys. Awesome. How's it looking? So you just have, you just have the last, you know what I would do, Catherine? I was watching a podcast this morning and they were recommending going to the MCAL project pages because a lot of people finish the shawl differently than the end of clue four. And they put their, what they did in their project notes and there's some really really cool ones so if you don't yeah if you don't like not that you wouldn't like it but if you if you're like on the fence look go look at those photos cool all right all right bye that was my sister you guys okay so anyway i go to the like i just told her to do I go to the project pages and usually what will happen is there's going to be, if there's something going like going south with the pattern, you'll know right away <laughs> because all the comments will tie in. And what I noticed with this particular project is a lot of people were like, um, don't understand the chart, but whatever. And so when you print the pattern, there are written instructions in conjunction with charts. And I think it's two charts because there's two sections to the shawl an A and a B. And so I sat down, I read the pattern and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of okay with this. I don't really understand some of the verbiage here, but maybe I'll figure that out as I'm knitting. And I think we've all been there where you're like on the page or even in a chart, you'll be like, eh, I'm not sure I understand that. But once you have like the project in your hand and you're working on it, intuitively, it starts to make more sense. So this is what I'm thinking as I'm reading the pattern. And so I read the pattern and then I look at the charts. You guys, I'm sorry. I'm just going to say the charts are fucking nuts. I might be an idiot. And listen, there's a high probability of that. I don't feel like the charts are clear. And so then I got concerned. I was like, I don't know how I'm using this chart with this pattern. And that freaks me out. And then I kept reading. And then finally, someone was like, you don't need to use the charts at all. It's not in conjunction with it's one or the other. You can use both, but you can use one or you can use the other. I was like, for God's sakes. So then I was like, well, then I'm fuck the charts. I'm not using those because I am not 
I don't even think the charts. And then I went back and looked at the chart and I was like, wait a second, the charts don't, I don't feel like these even match the written instructions in the way that I'm reading them. Whatever. So <laughs> I cast the project on. I do the first repeat. I ha I didn't know I did it during the repeat. I learned about it later when I looked down, but I made a boo-boo that I'm going to have to figure out how to correct. And then I, well, what you'll learn is I don't need to correct it and you'll find out why. But if I, I don't even know if the camera is going to, the camera is not picking it up. I am off by one stitch through here on the lace work so that honeycomb is offset and it's driving me nuts. One row. Now, my theory is like in the lace work, because it's just, this is not giving the pattern away. It's just yarn overs, right? It's a yarn over and you're knitting together, right? Standard lace work stuff. I'm thinking in my head, like when I go to, you aggressively pin this shawl and you starch it. So my thought process was like, I bet I could pin it and you wouldn't know. But in the back of my head, I'm thinking, but if she ever washes this, she's not going to pin it. And then, then it's really, I feel like it'd be obvious. So this is sitting in my head as I am in repeat two. And as I'm in repeat two, I'm like, something doesn't feel right. I'm like this... I don't understand. I need to do a stitch count. I go back to the pattern and here's my second issue. The pattern tells you how many stitches to cast on and then it tells you how many stitches you end up with at the end of the repeat. So if you make a mistake in between A and Z, good luck on knowing where it is, right? Because you, if you're relying on stitch counts, which I do, I like a stitch count. And again, not in the pattern. So again, I'm leaning on something that's not even there. So I read the instructions of the pattern again. And I, I read that across the repeat, when you, when you, well, okay. When you do multiple repeats, each repeat will be increased by one. And I'm like, I don't know how that's possible because there's more than one increase in within the repeat. There's like, uh, let's just say there's more than 10. I'm not trying to give away the pattern. You do have some, there's, I'm burping up my beer. There are some, there are some, you lose some stitches. We'll just put that there within the repeat. But in the end, by my count, you're increasing by 10. And I'm like, I go back and I read the sentence again. I'm like, I don't fucking understand this. So I'm like, I'm just going to wing this. I'm just going to, I'm just going to follow the pattern, but I'm going to have more lace work at the end. Like, I'm just going to extend a different part of the pattern because I have 10 more stitches and those 10 more stitches I'm going to throw in at the end of the rows, right? Like, I'm just going to, I'm not going to, I'm not, whatever. So I'm doing the second repeat. And at this point, I'm like, do I need to frog this entire thing or am I okay? And I'm looking I'm like, you know what? I still think I can pin this out. I think it's going to be okay. And I think I'm going to be fine winging this. It looked fine. The second repeat looks great. Like I have no complaints. I don't know what made me look down at the, at the pattern. And I said, why are there so many numbers in parentheses when there's only three versions of the shawl? Like you're picking one, two, or three. One, and then two and three are in parentheses. Makes sense, small, medium, large, right? So I look at the setup row and I'm like, man, there's seven, there's seven frigging numbers in that parentheses. And I know there's not seven sizes of the shawl and I don't understand that. And I counted my stitches at the end of the second repeat. And then I looked down at the very 
end of the repeat, and sure as shit, in parentheses is your final stitch count. And I see the same number. And I was like, but that's in the parentheses. What is happening? I read this pattern. I, I can't even tell you how many times I read it. I went back and read that paragraph again. <laughs> your setup row, the repeat within the setup row increases by one every certain block of that row. It's not one for the entire repeat. It's one per repeat within the first row. Meaning that I did not knit the first part of the second repeat correctly at all. And those stitches that I just kept doing lace work at the end of the rows, because I was like, I don't know what to do with these extra, you know, stitches. Well, they go at the beginning. <laughs> if this doesn't make any sense, just know this. I read the pattern a gazillion times and read it incorrectly a gazillion times. Went about my business a gazillion times. And then lo and behold, and like a... Bonnie Tyler on a lone road with a fan in her hair. She's there. Let there be light. The truth was told. So essentially, we have here completely incorrect pattern. And I have options. Here's the problem. Well, let's lay this out. This is what happens, again, when you don't follow rules and you don't pay attention. At one point when I was knitting it, I had to tink back because I, I forget what, I did something, I wanted to tink back and it was with yarn overs and knitting twos together. And when I was tinking back, the integrity of the yarn was frightening me a little bit. Like it's splitty, um, I am concerned about frogging and reusing this yarn. So I think what I'm going to do now that I finished the second repeat, I'm going to start the third repeat and I'm going to actually, oh my God, follow the fucking pattern. And then I'm going to go about my business and finish the shawl and probably keep it for myself. I love this yarn. I want it used in something, but I don't want to frog it and re-knit it and give it as a gift and have the yarn fail and have stitches breaking. Um, that freaks me out a little bit. So my options are to frog and re-knit it, which I think we just discussed I'm not doing, knit it for myself, and then maybe I pick a new color and knit a whole new one for the gift. That's where I'm leaning is just, I'm gonna go get a new color. I'm going to finish this one. I just don't feel, I don't feel comfortable giving it as a gift, knowing what I know. They'll never know. Like the, the gift recipient will have no clue. And I know that. But in my heart, I know, and I would be much rather wear it myself. So it's a constant reminder of, hey, dummy, read the fucking pattern. Then, you know, somebody, I, I don't know. So I think that's where I'm leaning. Moral of the story is, I'm the dumbest knitter. I swear to you, I read that thing. I can't even tell you how many times. And here's what's worse. Here's what's worse, you guys. So I actually filmed the podcast yesterday. And I just, I don't know if you can tell, I'm getting over a cold. But yesterday, I was sounding like I was in a swimming pool. Like, it was just weird. And I, I wasn't super... I don't, I don't like listening to people talk when they're really stuffed up because it makes my eyes water even listening to them. And I was like, I don't know that I can put that out there because I don't want anybody to have that reaction to me. But coupled with the fact that I talked about the pattern and it was before I realized my mistake. So I was like, this pattern's whack. I never said the pattern was bad. And the one thing I did say was that I don't believe that I am an experienced enough knitter which point in case, because I just don't think I'm an 
as an experienced of a knitter to be able to say a pattern is good or a pattern is bad. I just don't think I'm at that level in my in my knitting life, right? So yeah, so I scrapped yesterday's footage, not only because of my nasal drama, but I was like, well, I can't put that out there because I know the truth now. And that's just a flat out lie if I talk about the pattern because there's nothing wrong with it. Now, I'm going to hold true to one thing. Those charts, you guys, I don't understand those charts. And I literally sat down after I realized my mistake and I went back and I looked at the, the charts to see, oh, okay, I bet the chart makes sense now. I don't understand the chart. So we're just going to let the chart die. I'm going to re-knit it. I'm going to pick out a new color. I will stash dive. I have my knitting zoom in like 15 minutes. So I think I'll probably pick out a color during that and cast it on. But holy smokes, you guys. <laughs> Here's what I'm glad about. I'm glad this mistake happened with this and not with Lydia. Because that would have been a tearjerker. This I was just more like, I can't believe I'm this stupid. Like, how dumb could you be? It's kind of like if you think everybody around you is crazy and you keep talking about everyone around you is crazy, you're probably the crazy one. And that's kind of what I feel about the pattern. Oh, it's, but you know what? It's okay to be a dumb knitter. It's okay. Now I know that like, I really need to sit down and like, look at what I'm doing. I think what I am going to do one girl, I shouldn't say that a woman on her project page, um, said that she rewrote the pattern for herself, taking out some of the stitch markers. There is an issue with stitch markers across the board. If you look at the project notes, I'll just tell you this, cause this is not giving the pattern away. And I really don't understand this. So I'll just flat out say it. The pattern calls for 20 stitch markers and you place them in your setup row. And the issue with that is the author of the pattern even states you won't be using all the stitch markers, that they're there to be used in conjunction with the chart, which makes now even less sense to me. But everybody, like as I read through, everyone's like, take out all of your even stitch markers except the, the 20th. So Every even number one, do not place it except for the 20th one. I did that on the second repeat. It worked like a charm. So there are some issues with the charts and there's some issues with the stitch markers. So I am going to rewrite it for me with proper stitch marker placement and stitch counts so that I know I'm on track. I know I can tink back if I can figure out where that, you know what I mean? Like just that's what's going to happen. So the next time you see me, hopefully I'm wearing one of them. We'll see. I mean, I know I can knock one out before Christmas. Like I, I'm, I know I can finish one. And now that I understand, now that I know how to do it, I can do it much quicker. So that'll, that'll get done. So that is my knitting to show you. I really don't have anything else. I do have a hat I'm working on, but I, I'm not even, no, I'm not even going to show it. I'm just not. I don't like the yarn. I have negative things to say, and I need to be positive right now. And I'm going to drink my beer and be positive. So in that spirit, the dumb knitter here is going to show you some yarn she got in the mail, which is very exciting. And who knows, maybe I'll use one of these for the shawl. Whoa. Okay, you guys, um, I belong to two yarn clubs, talked about them before, BZY Peach and Terrapin Fiber Garden Club. So Terrapin, I've gotten two shipments from, so we're going to start with that. One shipment is here. This is 100% organic cotton. It's fingering weight. It is what she calls her Chesapeake base. Her Chesapeake base, I believe, also comes in DK. Um, so let's just take a look. Look, at you guys, come on. Look at the color. I just love, this is called bushel. So think of those bushel baskets at farmer's markets. You guys, I love it. Oh, and then... You guys, pumpkin. Now, I think the problem here is my hair is, if you couldn't tell, my hair is neon orange and it is making this look brown and I, it's really not, it's, it, it's got a lot of orange in it. Then I got second shipment. Oh, come on. 
we'll get into this. This is the Potomac base. 75% cotton, 25% linen. Yes. Okay. Look at that. This is called glass gem corn. You guys, I love this. I love this. I am thinking I might use this for the gift. I love this so much. It will be hard for me to let it go. But I think it would be stunning. Then there, this is a uh, blue Hubbard, which I believe is a squash. Yeah. Just the variation on that. It's just gorgeous. You guys, I have loved and Lydia, no, I didn't use her on Lydia in my, I've used some of her yarns and other shawl projects. The spiring spiral, the spiraling cables shawl by Stephen West, I'll get a photo in there, is her Chesapeake base. Um, I put some of her in my uh, Large Marge. I used the heirloom potatoes and I think sage. Anyway, love her yarn. And then, and you can buy, like you can get one, you can just get the yarn or you can get the club box, which has goodies. And I do get those and those have stitch markers and usually tea or something. So this is the BZY Peach. Um, I love this. This is the other one. I was like, if this was not DK, this would be the shawl. But this is DK. Um, it's 100% Pima cotton and it's called Mint. What is this called? Midnight Rain. I absolutely love this. And again, if it was fingering weight, this would be the shawl. So that's the yarn. Now I have gotten two shipments from Dots Yarn Den for Lydia, but I'm not going to go back over that. So over the month that I was not podcasting, that's kind of what I got in. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I love opening up yarn. I love, I just love everything about it. I love yarn. I love it. I love it. Just like I love beer. So yeah. I got stuff to work on. So I need to figure out, like, I need, the problem, the reason why I'm kind of debating about this, using this, is I could do a larger project. Oh, I just don't know what to do. I'm going to have to go through all my fingering weight and figure this out. I'll get it, I'll get it sorted by next time. I'll let you know. Um, and we'll see what I come up with. Ooh. All right, the only other thing I, that we're going to cover today and hopefully I brought it down here. We've got a segment. Literature for your knititure. Okay, so like I said, near, far. Near. Okay. I have not read a, I have not read a page since I started Lydia. And I'm feeling rather guilty about it. It actually really bothers me because I like to read. I have been reading, I have two series that I'm reading. The Dragonlance series, which is Tracy Hicks, Mar Margaret, 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 Margaret Wiseman. Um, I think I'm on book three. <laughs> Four weeks off. Can't remember where I'm at. And then I'm also reading The Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. I have started book two. Cannot remember a thing about it, so I'm going to restart book two. But what happened, just like when you, like, squirrel, I'm on Facebook, the devil, and Neil Gaiman, favorite author, is doing an unboxing of a book project that he donated to, and I think principally probably funded. And I was like, oh, let me go check out this collector's edition little too rich for this girl's blood, given that I haven't read the book. Cause I was like, what if I hate the book? I'm not spending that much money on a book I hate. So I did what other people do and I just go find the book. It is Little Big, John Crowley. Let's read the jacket. Like an Escher-esque dream, Little Big is a book you won't read so much as in habit. It chronicles the history of a most peculiar family. The Drinkwater clan is made up of unforgettable characters. 
And yet the most outstanding character is not a person but a place, the house called Edgewood. An immense country manse filled with unexpected rooms and illusory angles, it sits on the border between here and there, a place where reality and fantasy intertwine and mortals can believe in fairies. It is here that Smokey Barnable, a heretofore anonymous young man, comes to wet his love, Daily Alice Drinkwater, and so enters the family whose tale reaches backward and forward a hundred years from the sunlit summers of a gentler time to the last dark days of the century and beyond to a new spring. You guys, I am so excited to read this. And what got me was the in-between here and there. My favorite book by Neil Gaiman is Neverwhere. And I don't know whether it's that's because it's the first book I ever read by him um, or if it's just because it's my favorite book by him. And I think I've read all of his books at this point. Uh, and Neverwhere very much is an in-between place book. And it just hits me in my soul every time I read it. And so something about the in-between really got me with that. And I don't know about you. I do not. I am not a huge nonfiction reader. Like when I graduated from college, I was like, yes, yeah, screw education. <laughs> I like a book that allows me to escape. Now, if I need to research something or I want to understand something, obviously, I will read nonfiction without a doubt. But in my daily life, when I'm having a stressful day, um, I'm probably not reading, you know, nonfiction about World War II or, you know, the killing fields or, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not going down. So I usually want to escape. And the thing about Neil Gaiman and also Patrick Rothfuss, definitely. Name of the Wind. If you have not read that book, on my top three books of all time. Um, you are able to exit your reality without effort. Like you don't have to do mental gymnastics to enter the world that the author is writing about. And to me, that marks a piece of great literature. Like I can remember like when I, the first time I read Name of the Wind I didn't want it to end. And when it ended, I cried because I just didn't want to leave the world. Like, that's kind of like what I love about great writing. And that's what I like about fantasy and science fiction to a, to a, to a larger degree, I guess. And I'm hoping Little Big is like that, you guys. So if you've read it, please put something in the comments. Let me know what you thought. I'm going to dig in. And I know by the time I finish it, if I love it, it's going to be too late to get the collector's edition. And that's okay. You snooze, you lose. Sometimes you're ahead of things. Sometimes you're behind. Whatever. I've got a copy of the book. And really, at the end of the day, hopefully I love it. And that's all that matters. This concludes. Sorry, I'm checking my watch for my Zoom call. This concludes my literature for your literature. And yeah, let me know what you're reading. I'm curious. Like over the holidays, do you change? Do you get to read? Like that's the that's the thing that I think is a bummer that we've all got so much going on, whether you like the holidays or not. And I think the holidays are a bummer for a lot of people. And you like, I get it. I think the bummer for me is like I have less time to do things. Oh, this sounds so selfish. <laughs> But I have less time to do things for myself because I'm really trying to do some things for some other people and help some people out. And they're like, I don't want to say that I don't enjoy doing that because I do. But what that means is I usually give up a little bit of time of knitting, a little bit of time of reading or like there's no binge watching. You know what I mean? Like I'm just you lose a little bit of your me time. Um, so I'm hoping what I'm what I'm going to try to do is carve out. I'm going to commit to a half an hour to an hour of reading a night all the way through the holidays. And we'll see how it goes. Um, my issue is if I try to read in bed, I'm asleep in five seconds. If I need to fall asleep, then that's a great way to do it. But like with daylight savings, I'm crawling in bed at like 7, 7.30 or 8. I kind of don't need to be asleep at 7.30. That's a little ridiculous. So I usually try to stay up on the couch and read. So I don't know. We'll, we're going to see how I do. We're going to see how I do. I don't know. Let, let me know how you're doing with that. I think the next time I film may be after Thanksgiving. So it's not really, I'm going to be 
listen, I'm not a fan of that holiday. <clears throat> I don't even think we need to go into the politics of why I'm not a fan of that holiday. It's the same way I feel about Columbus Day. Like, come on, really? I'm going to propose that instead of having Columbus Day as a holiday, because I think it's stupid. Um, and listen, I'm not saying the discovery of America is stupid, but America was already discovered. There were already people here. We just killed all of them. Basically. So anyway, my point is, I would much rather have a national voting day that second Tuesday of November or first Tuesday, whatever it is. Listen, that makes sense to me to be a national holiday that people have the day off. They can show their kids the voting process, how peaceful it is, how easy it is. And how it's not rigged. I'm just saying we need that day off. That's I think it's ridiculous that that is not a holiday, a national holiday. That's insane to me. Yeah, let's not let half the population vote easily. More than half. So friggin' stupid. Anyway, let's not end on that note. Holy smokes, I got on a tear. You know what note we're going to end on? Oh my God, you guys. Season nine, Blacklist, Netflix, James Spader. That makes a happy girl. I just love him. Okay, you guys, that's it. That's all I got. Thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you got some knitting done. I hope you had a giggle at my expense. Lord knows I do. And, you know, take care of yourself, especially over this time of the year. Please take good care of yourself so that you can take care of other people around you. Love yourself because you're worth it. <laughs> you are worthy. Love yourself so that you can love one another. And man, check in on your friends and your family. This time of year can be really hard on people. And I just, you know, I want to make sure that you're not alone. Message me. Sheepless needles. Come on. Hit me up. You're not alone. And we can all get through this period. I mean, like, I know some people love this time of year. Some people, it's just, it can be really hard. I'm here. This community is here. James Spader is here. Come on. I love you guys. So just, I don't know. Take an extra minute. Pat yourself on the back. You know, you're worth it. And I'll see you guys soon. Toodles! Oh, Poncho in the face!